Good evening, my brothers and sisters. We greet you with Jesus' joy as we come into our study this evening. We welcome you to Pilgrim Baptist Church Midweek Bible Study. We ask that you will get your pen and your notepads out that you might be able, amen, to glean some of the points that will be made in the lesson tonight. We are coming out of the book of James of the New Testament, chapter 2, verses 1 through 13, as we speak to you this evening concerning impartial love. That love that does not judge, that love that does not oppress, that love that does not a man cast down. We ask that you join us, amen, as we follow the Spirit of God through our study this evening. And I pray that each and every one of you are doing exceptionally well and that you will have a wonderful Thanksgiving to come. God bless you and may heaven smile upon you. Come now and join us in our study. Good evening to each and every one and I pray that the Lord has blessed you abundantly during this time. We welcome you to another study period uh, with the Pilgrim Baptist Church. As we speak to you this evening concerning impartial love, impartial love. Uh, what the world needs now is love. And we are coming out of the book of James, chapter 2, verses 1 through 13 this evening for uh, our study period. Uh, we ask that you get your Bibles and your pens so that you can take your notes uh, as we continue to see what the love of Christendom and the love of God is in our lives. James writes, beginning at chapter 2, verses 1 through 13, uh, these words. My brethren, have not the faith of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Lord of glory, with respect of persons. For if there come unto your assembly a man with a gold ring, in goodly apparel, and there come in also a poor man in vile raiment, and ye have respect to him that weareth the gay clothing, and say unto him, Sit thou here in a good place, and say to the poor, Stand thou there, or sit here under my footstool. Are ye not partial in yourselves, and are become judges of evil thoughts? Hearken, my, bro my beloved brethren, had not God chosen the poor of this world, rich in faith, and heirs of the kingdom which he hath promised to them that love him? But ye have despised the poor. Do not rich men oppress you and draw you before the judgment seats? Do not they blaspheme that worthy name by the which ye are called? If ye are fulfilled, if ye fulfill the royal law according to the scripture, thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself ye do well. But if you have respect to persons, ye commit sin, and they're convinced of the law as transgressors. For whosoever shall keep the whole law, and yet offend at, in one point, he is guilty of all. For he that said, do not commit adultery, said also, do not kill. Now, if thou commit no adultery, yet if thou kill, thou art become a transgressor of the law. So speak ye, and so do, as they that shall be judged by the law of liberty. For he shall have judgment 
without mercy that hath shown no mercy and mercy rejoices against judgment. These words are penned for uh, our uh, matriculation this evening. As we come together, we are talking concerning impartial love. We find that Jesus, amen, as he walked the earth prior to the writing of James, uh, had no respect of person. Jesus dealt with people where they were. He met them where they were, and he forgave many of them where they were. Jesus, a man, came to seek and to save those that were lost. Lost souls was on his mind. Now, James, a man, takes time to write to the church. He is writing to those who are now children of God through Jesus Christ. Those who have been worshiping. Amen. And he wanted to straighten out some things that he found and heard that was going on in many of the churches through Asia Minor. Now, when James writes, he uses the term brethren, which means those who are of the body of Christ. He's going to deal in this particular text with that of a man, the sin of social partiality. Who has the big I and who has the little U, as we want to say. But when we come into the family of God, whether we are rich or whether we are poor, we are the same when it comes to being in the family of God. Listen at what he says as he talks about, amen, uh, the hypocrisy that sometimes we find in the church. And yes, it is in the church. You have those who you think, amen, are small potatoes. And then you got those who come in looking like royalty that you treat differently. We must be careful, brothers and sisters, during these times. That we don't show forth the partiality that Christ did not show, but we show partiality out of true prejudice. We have to be very careful not to cross over that line and become those who are judges of someone else's relationship with Christ. Jesus had told his disciples that the poor you will have with you always. But here in the text, he says, my brethren, have not the faith of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Lord of glory, with respect the person. So he starts out by saying that Jesus did not show any respect of person when he walked the earth. He came to deal with those who were hungry. He dealt with those who were hurting. He dealt with those who were going through sorrow. He dealt with those, amen, who were lost in their sins. And he made no difference of them. So here in verse number two, he says, For if there come unto your assembly, here we are in the church, a man with a gold ring and in good apparel. Oh, looking good. Amen. He is fine. Amen. Coming in, dressed to the night. And you oh, will, will give him the chief seat. You will tell the man that is poor and in, amen, should I say, modest apparel. You sit here while you come up and sit here. Here he is talking about favoring the rich, favoring those who have, amen, and despising those who have not. Now, we look at this, and when we look at poor in the Bible according to the time of the first century writing of these words of James, 
We find that poor did not mean they did not have anything. They did not have as much as some others. Some dressed moderately. Some even dressed, amen, in vile raiment. They were destitute. But even those should not have been uh, uh, treated any differently in the house of God. Listen now. He talks about the assembly. And he talks about being one in Jesus Christ. So here he says, goodly apparel, there come in also a poor man in vile raiment. So now we look at the assembly of God, the synagogue, and how many come dressed. Amen. And look at the invidious, amen, distinction, amen, how they divided, how they made choice in verse 3. And ye have respect of him that weareth the gay clothing. And say unto him, sit thou here in a good place, and say to the poor, stand thou there, or sit here under my feet. The poor is being despised, amen, and the rich is being exalted. Isn't it strange that even in 2020, we find that certain people are treated differently than others. When you are in the world, amen, because of your status, because of how you look sometimes, you are treated differently. I can remember a few years ago when they had an older gentleman who used to walk the roads, amen, uh, in, in, in the city. And he used to pick up cans as he walked around and he dressed, amen, in, in lowly apparel. But when this man, amen, transitioned and went home to be with the Lord, they found out he was a multi millionaire. He wanted to do this because it was a habit that he had. And yet many could look at him and they would look at him with disdain, those who did not know him. How about us today? How do you treat people, strangers that come into your church family? How are they treated? Are they met with a smile or met with a frown? I have been in churches to where, amen, you can look at the usher and the usher will look funny at you because the way a certain person was dressed. Oh, but don't, don't judge a book by the cover. I think you better read a few chapters before you start making decisions on someone. And here in verse number four it says, and ye not, ye not then partial in your Self. Are ye not then partial in your self? So here, James is saying, look at yourself. Partiality and the judgment and the prejudice is in you. You are the one making the distinction. This person is coming to worship God with what they have. What would Jesus have said if he had not dealt with the woman with the two mites, the widow who cast in all that she had, and he looked and saw others giving from their resources, and he looked at her and said she has given more than any of these because she gave from her heart first, and then she gave what she had. Oh, brothers and sisters, I come to bear record that Jesus, amen, through the writing of James here, is forbidding us to show partiality. Are ye not then partial in yourselves? So he's saying, look at yourself first. Look at how you are treating. Look at how you are thinking. And look at how you are pointing fingers. He says, all and all become judges of evil thoughts. So he puts this in line with evil thoughts, an evil disposition, looking down with disdain on someone because they are not like you. And verse number five says, hearken, 
Hearken means to hear. Take notice. Listen at what I'm saying. My brethren, had not God chosen the poor of this world, rich in faith, now, if you saw poor people, they had to trust the Lord at that time with all that they had. They, they had to trust God with feeding them on a daily basis. And sometimes they had more faith than those who stood tall in the synagogue. You got people come to church, act like they got faith, dress like they got faith, and when hard times come, no faith. So he says here, and heirs of the kingdom, which he hath promised to them that love him. So here he looks at man's equality. He looks at how we look at the chosen ones of God. Everybody that is chosen of God may not be wealthy, may not live in a mansion. They may not live in a fine home, but yet they are doing the work of the Lord wherever they are. He gives promises to the poor. He promises to take care of them. He promises that he will be with them. He promises uh, that he will provide for them. This is the goodness of God. The God that we serve. We become spiritual heirs to the kingdom of God. God, listen at this. He says, he hath promised to them that love him. Amen. And heirs of the king, heirs of the king, all because we love Christ, we have accepted Christ as Lord and Savior, as the Messiah, as the Son of God. We now have been born into the kingdom, and we are heirs with Christ. Amen. In the kingdom of God. Verse number six. But ye have despised the poor. Amen. And he put a period there. He stopped right there. Amen. Amen. The poor despised the oppression of the poor. The persecution of the poor. How people, amen, low rate, talk down. Do you remember when you were growing up and you heard some folks said they ain't going to be nothing because their parents wasn't nothing. They ain't about nothing, blah, 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 blah. Not knowing what God had in store for them down the road. Be careful how you cast judgment on others because you could be casting it upon yourself. A whole lot of people are a couple of paychecks from the poor house, and yet they are talking crazy talk like the money belongs to them. God can take what he has given at any time. And we must understand that our hope, amen, and our trust should be in God. It, there should be no oppression. There should be no persecution. But look at what's going on in the world today. How much oppression, how much persecution, how much murder, how much injustice that we are seeing. We have people who are being imprisoned uh, falsely. We have people who have been imprisoned and they are finding out that they were innocent. All because they had trumped up charges. The injustice that, that comes, uh, amen with evil men oh he says here do not rich men oppress you and draw you before the judgment seat he talks about this in church and he's talking about those who are coming to church and he's saying these same folk that you trying to exalt these are the ones that are cast you in jail these are the ones that will a man sue you and take whatever little thing that you have. And not only that, but do they, do they not blaspheme uh, that worthy name by which ye are called? That name being Christians, how, how they, 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 they low rated those who were called Christians, those who followed Jesus. Amen. Those who, amen, did not believe that he died, did not believe that he was buried and that he rose again, having all power in his hand. But listen at what he says here. That wonderful name of Jesus. 
people were blaspheming because they did not want to believe him to be the son of the living God. Oh, brothers and sisters, uh, he's teaching the church here how to keep the golden rule. He's te teaching the church how the church ought to be when those who are lost, when those who are seeking, amen, a relationship with God should come in and find love, should find kindness, should find a smile, should find a kind word, should find help if they need it. This is what the house of God is all about. Not to be judgmental, not to a man uh, persecute or oppress or put down or scandalize someone's name. And in verse number eight, it says here, if ye fulfill the royal law according to the scripture, thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself, ye do well. So now he goes to the golden rule. He, he lets us know that uh, our neighbor or any that's around us, our neighbor or uh, any that may have a uh, need and we know about it. They don't have to live next door, but they can be people that we know. We have a duty to our neighbors. And here he said, thou shalt love that neighbor. He's talking about brotherly love here. Amen. And he's talking about those who trust in the Lord. When he talks about the law, and, 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 and he was talking to those Jews who had now received Christ as their Lord and Savior. Now remember, James only taught the Jews. I want you to listen at this now. He is talking from experience because he now had to understand that the word of God was not only for the Jews but for the Gentiles. He had to come to grips himself with some of the prejudices that he had before coming to the full knowledge of Christ. And here he is talking, amen, to those of the church. And he brings this thing back in. Not only brotherly love for one another, but love that we should have for those outside who may not know, amen, who you know and may not know what you know. So he looks at the obligation to the law. That's why I'm so glad that I'm on the mercy and grace and not so much on the law. Many of them were still hung up on the Mosaic law, the law that they had followed for many, many years. And now James is teaching them. Amen. That if you love your neighbor as yourself, he said, now you do well because you are now keeping your obligation to a man, humankind. Neighbors, 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 neighbors are those that you may have acquaintance with. But look here at verse number nine, if you will. It talks about their obligation. But if you have respect a person, ye commit sin and are convinced of the law as a transgressor. So he looked at sin being defined. He looked at partiality, a man being forbidden. But yet he said, now you're talking about the law. And we know that no one can keep the whole law. If you break one, you have broken all of them. And don't you know we equate certain sins as bad sins, bigger sins, and sin is sin. All transgressions against God and his word is sin. There is no big sin, no little sin. Sin is sin. There is no white lie. There's a white lie. Where's the black lie? Amen. Lie is a lie. And the Bible teaches us all liars will Find themselves in the lake of fire. Go to Revelation, amen, where he talks about death and hell being destroyed. But yet, he says all liars. He didn't say some. He didn't say partial lies. He said all liars, all deceivers. And he says, yeah, for 
For if ye offend in one point, he is guilty of all. So if you broke one, you done broke all ten. And God already knew that man had a track record. He could not do the whole law. He could not practice the whole law. And God knew that man would need a savior. He would need a redeemer. This is why he sent Christ. And verse number 11 says, For he that said, Do not commit adultery, said also, Do not kill. Now, if thou commit no adultery, yet if thou kill, thou art become a transgressor of the law. Which meant if you followed the law, there was no way you was going to please God because you come up short every day. But through Christ Jesus, having mercy and grace bestowed upon us, we now have an advocate. We now have a savior, a mediator. We have a spiritual lawyer that stands and speaks on our behalf to the Father. Verse number 12, as we hasten out. So speak ye, and so do, as they that shall be judged by the law of liberty. So here, he says, as a body of Christ, ye ought to be speaking the truth, doing the right thing, and talking what you are living. So he is now putting this back in their lap. And he says now, amen, so speak and so do as they that shall be judged by the law of liberty. So now, what you sow is what you're going to reap. So he says here, these are the requirements that you walk the walk if you're going to talk the talk. You ought to apply, amen, these things to your own life. That you not look down at people, but that you will give them an opportunity, amen, to show who they are. Don't cast judgment before you even know what's going on. And the sad thing is, some people's reputation have been tarnished because of gossip. Some people's reputation has been tarnished because of lies. Some people, amen, have, have, been, have, have had their reputation destroyed because of hatred, amen, and because of prejudice. Look now at what we have been dealing with in the country. Look at Black Lives Matter. And I come right now, yes, black lives do matter. But black lives ought to matter to our black people that we not continue to slay ourselves in the streets and, and commit genocide across the land. I don't know who I'm speaking to right now, but, amen, it's sad. I grew up during the time of racism. I grew up during the time of the Klan. I grew up during the time when I heard my grandfather and grandmother talk about them riding their horses and coming in trucks, amen, dressed in white robes. And I look now and see, amen, that you got a white and red truck coming in, putting dead bodies on a white gurney and covering them with a white sheet and carrying them out. Amen. Dead. So I come to bear record. Amen. We must look, amen, to see what the goodness of God says concerning that of love. And he says here we should not be judging. We should not be killing. We should not be murdering. Uh, but we should be greeting one another with the love of Christ. And then he says in verse 13, for he shall have judgment without mercy that has showed no mercy and mercy rejoices against judgment. I want you to look at this. He's talking about what happens to the unmerciful. He's talking about judgment according to someone's work. Your choice, how you believe, your faith, amen, how you treat somebody. 
How many of you listening will realize that the way you treat somebody else is the way somebody will treat you down the road? For I said it earlier, whatsoever a man soweth that shall he also reap. So brothers and sisters, impartial love. That is spoken of through that of James. Amen. Devotional reading on this can come out of Matthew 12 and 1. And you can have a background scripture. Amen. Coming from James chapter 2. I encourage you to read this whole chapter. Because if you have been born again. And if you are living and walking by that of faith. Then you can have that radical faith. You can have that delivering faith. You can have that saving faith. Amen. You can have that believing faith. That trusting faith that can only come from a relationship with Almighty God. Oh, I'm, I'm so glad that we, amen, in the church can just love folk for being folk. Amen. Kindness will take us a long way. And loving our neighbor, seeing the pain that is going on around the world now. People who don't have a friend. People who may not even have somebody to tell them a better day is coming. All someone needs is a kind word. When was the last time you encouraged somebody? When was the last time you reached out and told somebody it's going to be all right? God has it in his hand. So brothers and sisters, let us walk. Not being judgmental, because in Matthew chapter 7, it says, Judge ye not that ye may not be judged. For with the same judgment ye shall be judged. Amen. And find yourself on the wrong side. So I thank you for listening this evening. I thank you for being a part of this study. And I pray that you will take time to read chapter 2 of James for yourselves. Amen. And glean, amen, uh, the things when it talks about faith and works. And when it talks about uh, show me that, 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 that works without that faith and I'll show you my faith by my works. Uh, I, it, this right here teaches us how we should live and how we should carry ourselves as children of Almighty God. Maybe there's someone who is listening. Maybe you have been prejudiced. Maybe you have been judgmental. Maybe you have persecuted somebody. And let me just go on. These right here are the things that bullies do. These right here are things that preppy folk do. Rich folk look down on people who don't have as much as they have because they think they're in a certain group. But let me tell you something. God can take take them and man and whittle them down to whether they're on the street. Oh, I tell you, you can lose everything in the stock market at one time. I come to bear record that we need to learn how to entreat one another as human beings. And there's only one race of people on this earth, and it is the human race. So if we have someone who is listening and you would like to make Jesus your choice. I ask that you repeat after me at this time. Father, I ask you into my life. I am a sinner. I have transgressed. I have done wrong. But I come now believing that Jesus is your son. That he died on an old rugged cross and shed it his blood. For my sins. So I ask you now to come into my life. Come into my life. Meet me where I am. And I will give you glory. I will give you honor. And I will give you praise. He died. He rose. He got up with all power in his hand. And I believe he is your son. My redeemer my mediator, my lawyer. Thank you, God, for hearing my cry. And I want you to pit every groan. In Jesus' name, amen. Brothers and sisters, we give God the glory. 
we give him all the praise. And just remember, Pastor Rector loves you, and there is nothing you can do about it.